Business Brain, episode 474 for Casual Friday, August 11th, 2023. (music) Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take an idea, maybe two ideas, and we analyze them, we crunch them, we dissect them such that we are in the process of doing that training our business brains together so that we can each keep living our charmed lives. Sponsors for this episode include Zinch, where you can go and they will waive their $250 application fee for you as a business brain listener when you sign up at financingthatworks.com. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out here in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. Happy Friday, man. Happy Friday. Yeah, it's always, uh, well, it's always Friday on Friday, isn't it? Um, it is. Yeah. Hey, so at uh, last episode, kind of the second half of Wednesday's episode, we were talking about this avoid at all costs list and the idea of focus and really, yeah. you know, being ruthless about staying on those five things on your list. I have a related question for you. This could be okay. a, the series that lasts us for the rest of the year, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but we'll 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 take five or seven minutes here on it, it, it and both talk about this. How do you manage procrastination? Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you could flip it around. How does procrastination manage you? <laughs> well, there's that, right? Uh, that, maybe that's the right place to start is figuring out, you know, how does it get its hooks into you? Like, wh- what are the what are the signs that you are procrastinating? Because awareness is is a big part of it, right? Yeah. I'll tell you how I do it. And I, and I don't uh, proclaim that this is the right way, but it is. Oh, we're all different. Works. Yeah. 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 It, it works for me. And part of that is I have, um, it's funny how you just focus thing. I, I, I do have good focus, but I have a lot of stuff going on. Yes. And so I do find I procrastinate just like everybody else, maybe even more. Uh, and, but what I find is if I have a number of projects in the works, if I start procrastinating on one, I, I often just roll into another thing like, Oh, you know, uh, I don't want like today. Okay. I got to, you know, get these podcasts posted and get them all scheduled and everything else that we record. Do I need to do that all immediately or, you know, do I push it off and then I roll into another project? I've got to, you know, work on this thing and real estate stuff. So for me, having a bunch of different things going on, I still procrastinate, but I do feel that I'm still productive even if I do procrastinate. Does that make sense? It totally does. I, I am, ex- I, I, I don't want to say I'm exactly the same way, but I'm exactly the yeah. same way, right? Like I have lots going on. I can always occupy my time by yeah. being productive with something. But to me, that still allows me to procrastinate other things, right? And so yeah. what I try to do is look at, all right, when, what am I, what am I choosing not to do? AKA what am I avoiding? And the, the best time I noticed this yesterday, yeah, I was why? in, yeah, I was in the, the flotation tank, uh, in the afternoon. It was a weird, like I was in a weird mindset for the float. I wasn't actually relaxed or anything. I was, I had a lot going on. It was, I, I, I thought about canceling the float and then I realized I was too late to do it. I'm like, ah, screw it. I'll just go. I can't, I can't do the float just so you know. Okay. I get, I get seasick after. <laughs> really? It's great. Oh, brutal. Yeah. Just laying in the tank gets you seasick. No, no. Laying in the tank was great. I loved it. Okay. But, but when I got out, I was like, wow, this is so relaxed. I'm going to book another one and, and yeah, like, yeah. let me wait and everything. I get, and on the way home, I started feeling kind of, whoa, this is kind of wow. strange. By the time I got to my house, I sat, had to sit down on the couch and like not move with my feet down because my whole spatial huh. awareness was messed up and I felt like I felt like I was on a boat. And that I was seasick, seasick for probably an hour and a half, 90 minutes or so. That's fascinating. I I don't think I can do the tank anymore. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to hijack your story. It's just interesting. Well, so I was in the tank and I, I was more like alert than I usually am in the tank. Usually I'm, I'm, my goal is to like not think about 
like to, to let my thoughts sort of pass and not interact with them. That was not going to work for me yesterday. So I was just engaging with my thoughts. It's like, well, I'll just take what I have. You know, this is how my head is today. And it's fine. You know, I, I, I I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm detached from everything. No one is interrupting me. So I'm just going to enjoy the time to think. And a few things popped into my head where it was like, oh yeah, I really need to do that. Why am I like, I, and I know I've been avoiding that. I have plenty of other work to do. I can check off my list that I was super productive without doing these three things. But man, like those things need to move the business forward. And I, I, I often find that it's the, I will procrastinate the working on the business stuff for being productive with the working in the business stuff. And I, I think it's, there's the the fear of the unknown, right? Working on working yeah. in the business is things I know that need to get done. I know how to do them generally. And, yeah. you know, I can like solve those little problems and have lots of little wins. The working on the business, I, I could work on, on some way of expanding the business or pushing it forward uh, for, you know, weeks or even months. And then in the end, it was like, oh, actually, that was that didn't work out. Like, you know, it didn't work. So I right. think there's it, it not always, but but that happens. That's just how it that's how that kind of that's what yeah. that is and so i i there's definitely fear uh, of something you know fear of the unknown fear of failure fear of success which i think sure. are two that the, they're actually the same thing uh fear of success and fear of failure sort of feel like the same thing to me um so i, I it's definitely um being a like making myself aware of okay wait what didn't i do today and maybe maybe that's a practice i need to uh, adopt not every day, but perhaps once a week looking and saying, okay, all the, here are all the things I did this week. What are the things that I kicked? What cans did I kick yeah. down the road? And let's look, let's look myself in the eye about those cans and, and ask the question why. And often like yesterday in the tank, it was like, that was really stupid that I'm not sending that one guy, this email that could change the the nature of of you know this one project we're doing dramatically it's like why am i not doing that well because it could change the nature of this product project dramatically it's like i'm afraid of change okay great fine that's just a human thing no problem i'll send him the email yeah. i know it's the smart move but those things happen automatically right for me and so i have to i have to really be intentional about looking at it and i i, I think that that Self-awareness is, is yeah. really important. I agree. Yeah. I, I like to mix short-term and long-term projects together because I find that on longer-term projects, I, I do I can fall into this procrastination mode. Totally. So if I have, yeah. So if I have a like I've I've shipped products my whole life every day. And so even now that I'm, you know, not running a, a you know multiple businesses anymore that ship out stuff all over the world and thousands of orders, yada yada yada. Even I still have w one business that ha stuff ships every day uh -huh. and it, I can stop. Okay. I got to make sure I get these shipments out. And even though it's, it's not about the amount of money that it makes, but it just kind of this action thing yes. makes me feel better. And then I go, okay, I'm done with this. I got to, now I have to get back to my computer. I got to work on this project. I got to write another chapter in the book. I've got to do this. I got to answer these emails, stuff that's kind of squishy if you will. Yep. And, yes. Uh, yes. Takes. Yeah. So that, that, that mix of short and long-term, it really helps me manage my procrastination. All right. Look, as small business owners, we all know that these unexpected costs can arise at any time. The good news is our sponsor Zinch understands that the unexpected is an expected part of running a business. So why wait around for a sudden impact to your business? Check out Zinch today to see how you can become prepared and stay prepared. And that's because Zinch is a direct lender tailored to small and medium sized businesses like ours that makes loans simple, fast and flexible and can approve up to 250 K in under two days. When you partner with Zinch, you won't have to wait months for a traditional bank loan. So whether you're dealing with, you know, some burst pipe or lightning struck and like ruined some machinery or another big bill you didn't expect or the costs that come from expanding your workforce, Zinch can help you with what you need when you need it. 
Their specialists work with you and help you choose the best solutions for your needs. And there are no commissions or third-party approvals, so Zinch can give you better rates, faster approvals, and keep your information secure. Don't wait for an emergency. Apply today with Zinch. And for a limited time, Zinch is waiving application fees for all our listeners of Business Brain here. That's a $250 value just for minutes of your time. Go straight to this special URL, financingthatworks.com. Again, the URL is financingthatworks.com. Loans made or arranged pursuant to a California finance lender's law license and our thanks to Zinch for sponsoring this episode. While we have you here, I've got a great recommendation for a show. When it comes to Apple, these folks know what they're talking about. Leo Laporte of the Twit Network bought his first Mac over 40 years ago in 1994 and has been an Apple lover ever since. That's probably why they have three, not one, not two, but three Apple podcasts on the Twit Podcast Network. The oldest, of course, is Mac Break Weekly, started almost 20 years ago. Alex Lindsay, Andy Anatko, Jason Snell, and Leo talk about all the latest Apple news. They are Apple fans, but not Apple fan boys. They call it as they see it, and sometimes they're even a little hard on Apple. They also do a show called iOS Today with Micah Sargent and Rosemary Orchard. And if you're into iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches, or Apple TV, you'll love iOS Today. And then, of course, there's Hands on Mac, inside tips from Micah Sargent on getting the most out of your Mac every week. Expert analysis, helpful advice, and entertaining discussions. Go to twit.tv slash Apple to find your next favorite Apple podcast. And our thanks to Leo and the team for doing this swap with us. All right, Shannon, we talk about our business brains all the time. It's literally the name of the show. Yes. You had this idea about being intentional or or not, uh, but somehow passing down our business brains to to our kids so that they can use their develop and use their business brains throughout their lives. Yeah. I, I've been thinking about this because I, I got in a, a long discussion about education and on uh, Twitter and stuff and go back and forth about mm. like public schools, government schools, private, this kind of stuff. And, and sure. I started thinking a lot of, I, I my kids are older now in their twenties and uh, much of what I see, how they react to things, their attitude, their optimism. I think much of it, is based on their experience with us uh, as business owners and and using our business brains. So I thought For we sure. could talk about some of the ways I, you know, th- I think uh, that we've helped tune their own brains using our business background and stuff. I think it you know might be helpful for people out there that have kids all along the age, uh, you know, age range from yeah. little kids to adults. I I think I think there's. There's a lot of, of this. I mean, there's some intentional teaching, right. That that we as parents can do. Uh, But, but I think even, uh, I don't want to say more valuable than that, but more common than that. And therefore more valuable simply because it happens more often is the, what I call the osmosis or the dinner table learning where your kids just hear you ranting about something or they, you know, you wind up talking about a, a scenario, be it a problem or a whatever. And you're just sharing your thoughts about it. And I first noticed this with my daughter when she was in middle school, we weren't really using our business brains. We were using our drummer brains. She was playing drums in the school band and we would talk about, um, uh, you know, how she approached things and it would just, it wouldn't, we wouldn't spend hours about it. It would be like four minutes here, 30 seconds there. Right. right? And she became very quickly the best drummer in this band. And it was a band of 110 kids. Like she really had to learn how to drive this band and all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And she did. And she like the, the band director was like, Oh, this is so great. You know? And he said, it's so great that she's got you to teach her. I'm like, well, I mean, I I've showed her some of the things I'm like, but, She's learned, you know, that your band in your room. He's like, no, no. And and he pointed out to me, he's like, think about what you're talking about at the dinner table. I'm like, oh, well, we'll just talk about like, oh, I noticed this thing that you did and maybe try doing it this way. And then we move on, you know, but yep. that those are the things that makes a huge difference. And I, I agree. And, and it's happened with business brains, too. In fact, I was talking to my daughter the other day and she said, oh, 
guess what? You know, I was in this scenario. She's got this thing. She's working out. It's a whole big fiasco. And she's like, I, uh, I used the two tokens concept on him. And ah. I, I, she's like, I just freaked out that like, oh my it. gosh, I can't believe this is never going to work out. This is terrible. And they're like, oh no, 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 no. It's not that. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm like, oh yes, yes. It's really good. <laughs> and and they do get it by osmosis and you, you're leading by example. And one of the things you can do, I think that for your kids is managing your time. If your kids feel like they're second place to your business, that's, they're going to keep that uh, with them for a long time. If you're there. late all the time, if you don't get home for dinner, uh, and I've been there, you know, you think, oh, I got to just, I got to stay another hour. I got to get these things done. No, you don't. You can go back to work, especially if they're little. Especially if they're little. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, you know, get, when they go to bed, go back to work. Um, you know, my wife and I started the entire business, uh, you know, that way. And, and so, yeah. That's how we started deals get, on the web. I, I exactly. think we both were doing the same thing. We were both working yeah. after our yeah. kids went to bed. Yeah. 10 to midnight, man. Prime yeah, man. hours right Prime there. Prime hours. Yeah, for as, me, it's like 11 to 2 in the morning, but still, yeah, you know. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and as they get older, the, your kids aren't going to want to be around you during those times. So it, you, you get some more time. It so, opens it up, yeah. Yeah. L understanding that they're watching you. And then one of the other things I always loved is, is talking, just like you said, talking about solving problems issues that come up. A lot of people have this philosophy, you know, don't bring your business home. Don't talk about it, but you, you don't want to come home and, and bitch and moan and complain about everything, but it's great to talk about how we fix this problem, how this issue came up and oh, yeah. did something about that. They, they, it's really great for your kids to talk about those things at the dinner table. Right. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's good. We, we call it car talk here. Cause we, you know, we travel a lot in the car and we, we wind up having these long discussions and I loved it. You know, it was, it was really, it was really good. Yeah. Um, the other thing I would say is employ your kids, put your kids to work in yes. your business. You know, once they can do anything, get them involved. They, you know, they love it. Um, you know, I've got photos of my kids in huge, you know, pallet sized boxes full of iPhones, sorting <laughs> them by color and this kind of stuff very simple stuff but yeah yeah you know it, it, they they feel like they're contributing because they are right uh you, you can pay them you can pay them some cash but you can also pay a lot into their future uh investment accounts you know yep. start a roth 401k for them sure. or a roth ira uh and just having them there like we picked up our kids after school and if they didn't have sports or before they got really into sports you know we we bring them back and have them do stuff at the office putting stickers on stuff you know, I mean, I could just tell you a story. You know, once my daughter got old enough, um, my general manager, his kid came in too, and they tested DVD players for oh, nice. weeks yeah, when yeah. we were buying, you know, consumer electronics. I think that's a, a real good thing to do. Um, and, and one of the last things I, I would say, there's a, a book we talked about a lot here on the show called The Slight Edge. The concept is, you know, you really only have to be like a few percentage points better uh, to find success and to build wealth. And there's a, there's a slight edge for teens book where kids talk about how they've implemented this slight edge concept that I really like. And, you know, you get an audio book if your kid doesn't, you know, look to sit down in front of and read to, for long form stuff, but, uh, we'll put a link in the show notes, but everybody should read the slight edge and your kids should uh, get exposed to it too. Uh, yeah, we have mentioned that before. I've never, I, I've never read it. So maybe I need to change that. So. It's a really good book. Yeah, it it it's very basic, but it it just shows you step after step after step and an example after example how if you just do a little a bit little more, bit more, yeah, it yeah, it's not ground shaking, you know, earth shattering effort uh, that's going to build you success. Most likely, it's right. going to be this showing up every day, being on time, being early. You know, how do I help? I mean, all these kinds of things like we talk about, but it, it's a great book and. Uh, this one for teens is great because it's mostly just examples of other kids, how they've implemented the process. Mm. Check it out. Ah, I and, like and it. And share your stuff. What do you do with your kids? You know, uh, do you bring them to work? Do you talk about stuff at home? Uh, is one of the pros and cons of it, you know, feedback at businessbrain.show. Tell us what you are out there. Ask your questions. We'll feature it on the show. You could win a MacBook. Absolutely. Yeah. Win a MacBook. Send an email to feedback at businessbrain.show. That's how it starts. And then we go from there. 
Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for sharing the show with your friends who need to learn, want to learn, and keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week.